what it is, people. In this video, I'm going to talk about three main reasons why you are getting rejected from every game development job you are applying to. Because let's face it, we all want to work in a big game studio, work on a huge title, be a part of that. But every single time you apply to get that job, you get rejected. And I totally understand how you feel because let's face it, we all went through the same thing. I applied to a couple of jobs and I got rejected. And not even that, I didn't even get a reply. Like, hey dude, you have been rejected. That will be enough, I will be satisfied. But I didn't even get that until I realized what I have to do to get to that spot, to get to that interview and eventually what I need to get, you know, hired. And this also happened to a lot of people from my game development academy until they realize, you know, how things are done and things click together. So now a lot of my students are working in Rockstar games, in Azure games, for the military and other game studios. Yeah, went on to create my own game called Tippy Tap. Ultimately, it wound up the number one overall app on the iOS app store for about three and a half weeks. I uh, got about 3 million downloads and uh, it made quite a bit of money. When I lost my job, which was a really good job at a really top company, I was really depressed and just found your channel. It was like, I was just like, I was just watching that I made a couple of games by myself and then I got a job because I put my games into their resume. Hi, my name is Fah here and I help people achieve their dreams of building games. So if you are in that kind of stuff, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Before I proceed to tell you these tips, make sure that you pay close attention because it's really important that you understand what you need to do. This is not some mumbo jumbo that you are listening from a weird dude on the camera on YouTube. These are actual tips from real life that will help you get a job in a game development studio. So pay close attention. So the first important thing that you need to do in order to get a job in a game development studio is watch a lot of tutorials, right? Wrong. That's not what you need to do. You actually need to have a portfolio and you need to have a stacked up, really good looking professional portfolio. What a lot of people do is they stack up a not really good looking and not the professional portfolio. With this, I mean, a lot of people watch tutorials on YouTube here and there, it doesn't matter where, but they create games from those tutorials. They're mostly unfinished games because they don't even get to finish that tutorial. And this is what they put in their portfolio to present to the people, you know, to a big company. Okay, hire me, look at this. <laughs> it sounds funny when I just talk about it. Imagine this, you have one woman who goes to the market to sell vegetables. Now, because she wants to sell a lot of vegetables, earn a lot of money, stacks up all the vegetables she can find from, you know, tomatoes to tomatoes, whatever, you know, and she stacks that up while she's doing that. Of course, she is going to put some, you know, rotten vegetables, some vegetables that are not good, that are past their day and so on and so forth. And at the end of the day, she's not going to sell as much as she wants. On the other hand, you have another woman who only stacks up tomatoes that are fresh, that are nice, and she sells all of them. This is because she has nice tomatoes. It's the same thing with projects. If you have a nice project, if you have a good looking project, a finished project, then you will impress the employer who you are trying to impress. What's also important to know is that you should put that in your website. Yes, GitHub will work and a lot of people do that, but in my personal opinion, having your own website looks more professional makes you look you know like a real serious dude who wants to do this and also number one thing when you put your game in your website don't just put a zip file to your project that somebody needs to download open it and put no put it as a you know either a downloadable file that can be played right away if it's a windows game or a mac os game or embedded in your browser as a game that can be played directly because you know people don't have time to download your project open it in a unity editor and and go through it to see how it is another huge mistake that i see a lot of developers do is that they try to be the mr know it all. With this I mean they try to learn a lot of things. They want to learn C Sharp, Java, Swift, C++, C, Python and all of these things. On one hand I understand that and I don't blame them because a typical game development job looks like this. We want the Unity developer who also knows Unreal, CryEngine, who knows to create his own engine, who knows to know uh, a gazillion other engines and so on and so forth. But let me tell you a secret about that. When you see a job posting that requires one thing, two things, three things, four things, five things, ten things, most of the times that is the HR dude trying to be, you know, smart and get a good guy for the company, good guy. But essentially at the end of the day, what they are looking for, they will never find. So if you are confident that you can do the job that is, you know, being required, then apply for it. Even if you only know one thing from the list that they mentioned. So don't try to learn a gazillion languages because that will only be an obstacle in your road. You will lose time. You will waste time 
And you will not get good in all of those things that you learn. Because let's face it, you cannot be a professional in 10 programming languages. You can be a professional in two, three, four, let's say five. Let's say five-ish programming languages if you are coding for 10 years and so on and so forth. But you cannot be good in 10 or 20 or 30 programming languages. So leave that be. Don't try to learn all of that. You know, I have a friend from my city who actually just started. Like he was learning for four months and one company was hiring. The, I met the dude who is the owner of that company they have like 500 people working for and they were looking for 500 more and you know I was mentioning that to people that got to this friend didn't even know that he was into programming learning that but he was four months into it and he got hired so you can imagine what can he learn in four months you know this is what I mean you need dedication you need a will to learn and you need to be confident that you can do the job that is at hand when you have all of that just apply you know with the portfolio previous step and don't worry how things will roll out the last step is something that I call crickets and with this I mean when you look at every single developer well the majority of them you just you can hear crickets what do I mean by this they're not present anywhere they don't have their own blog they don't have their own website they don't have the you know they have their social media but it's like socializing with their friends and commenting on the pictures ha 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 having fun and all of that stuff but you know that will not bring you anywhere to the goal of you getting a job in the game development industry what you need to do especially in this day and age of social media you need to have a social presence you need to showcase what you are doing if you're doing or working on something cool create a video about it post it online create a blog post about it post it online share it in facebook groups on reddit groups groups make sure that you you know socialize with the people from the same branch you have a lot of game development groups on Facebook you have reddit forums and so on and so forth so make sure that you are there also one thing that I see a lot of people are not doing is contributing to you know stack overflow or unity or unreal answers depending on which engine you are so if you contribute on those websites it is a very good chance that you will be noticed by somebody who will contact you I, I personally got offers like this you know I, I cannot even remember but it is always a good idea to have a social presence. I, I'm always in, you know, my favorites are YouTube and blog. If you don't like to be on a video in front of video like I am in front of video, in front of the camera, not in front of video. <laughs> video is here. <laughs> Anyways, if you don't like being in front of the camera, you can create a blog. It's cheap, you know, you can get a cheap hosting for $10, $15, $100 a year. And just, you know, write things that you are doing, write tips and tricks. If you are working on a game, mobile game, you optimize this in some way, share that with the world. People will see what you are doing. And that can be also part of your portfolio and can make you look even more professional than just having, you know, a bunch of projects stacked up on your portfolio. Anyways, these three things are what I think the most important when it comes to you applying to a job in the game development development field. And with that, I don't have anything else clever to say, except, you know, all the things I say are clever. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyways, if you want to learn, you know, game development, I have some links down below. So I have a game development blog where I post a lot of useful things that you, you know, should pay attention to. So uh, make sure that you check those out. Uh, other than that, subscribe. I mean, subscribe, man. Don't make me cry. Subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.